All right. Um, so, um, as Mrs. Jamison said, I've already had two students email me this week that um, asked me to send transcripts to another school forum that they are going to be transferring at the end of this year. Um, a little bit closer to home, one of them went to the state school. I don't think this mic's going to work tonight, so I'm just going to yell. Come on down front, Mr. Goldman. Okay. I'd be able to well, hear I you. would, but I got my little thing over here. So. Okay. 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 so, can everybody hear me? Sure. Yes. yes. Okay, good. I hopefully I won't lose my voice. We've done this presentation for the students all week, so this is I think the fifth time that we've done I've done this, and I'm not a teacher. I'm not used to talking all day, so uh, I'll try to hopefully make my voice will last. Uh, how many of you have been to part one and part two that we did? Excellent, very good. For those of you who may not have been able to make part one and part two, we missed you. Uh, but that piece aside, uh, this workbook that you got, the nuts and bolts of applying to college, is part three is part three of a three-part series of, uh, of, of workbooks that will then pace the then juniors, now seniors, through this process. Um, so for some of you, this might be a little confusing. Go, well, wait a minute. You're talking about filling out applications. What about looking at colleges and, and all this other stuff? We covered those in the first two workshops. If you do not have this or you misplaced of this one, the first two, if you go to the Middleborough High School website, Click on the guidance link and then click on junior information. You will find workbooks one and two. They actually look a lot nicer than these black and white copies that are colored. Um, and um, that will help walk you through the process and bring you up to speed with workbook number three. So at this point, we have extended the invitation to all of our seniors. Oh, I'm sorry, and the information that you would you would find those workbooks under the junior link on the guidance website because we did those presentations when your students were juniors. Uh, this is also being videotaped tonight, so if you uh, want to, if you really enjoyed it, you want to watch it over again, or maybe you just have some questions about things, uh, it will be rerun on local cable and there'll be a link on our website to it also. Uh, so hopefully uh, the information will be out here and it'll help you um, run through a nice smooth process with this. So we have we did uh, send an invitation to all of our seniors, and I think maybe we had a handful that did not take us up on it at this point, with about 10 students maybe. About 10 students who, uh, one reason or another, could not make either the college application boot camp that we had this summer or the um, workshops that we did this week. We will be following up with all of the seniors individually, whether they attended the workshop or not, uh, to personalize our instruction towards them and help them with their specific situations. If you would like to be a part of that, you certainly could. Um, just email your, your child's guidance counselor, and we'd be happy to set up a time where the three of us or four of us could sit down and uh, go over everything together. Um, I can tell you the students, this class has um, overall has done a really good job with a few stragglers of working with them. But um, a lot of them have done a lot of work. The students that went to the boot camp are already miles ahead of most high school seniors at this point. They got a lot of work done. They're probably about 90% complete on their applications, and they just have a few little more, a few more things they have to do. And they can move on to the next phase, which is the financial piece of the uh, college process. So inside the workbook, we have a senior timeline. These are not cast in stone, but suggestions about when you should be doing certain things. So the showing up here today for the nuts and bolts of applying to college. You can cross that, check that one off. You did it. The GPAs and the class ranks we are hoping will be updated and ready to go tomorrow. Uh, if not, early next week at the latest. Uh, for the students that went to boot camp, they got an unofficial copy of their transcript over the summer uh, with the GPA and a rank. It may stay the same. It may change a little bit. Uh, there's always a little tweak in these. Sorry. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. Okay. Um, this will be better for cable TV, too. <laughs> um, GPAs. So um, there were a few students that had incompletes over the summer. They were sick at the end of the school year. So there was just a little 
cleaning up we had to do to make sure that everything was accurate and was being calculated correctly. So we will send an email out to the seniors and the parents. How many of you have gotten emails already from guidance this year? Okay, so you're getting the, the reminders and stuff like that? Good, good. Um, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna send an email out telling you when the official numbers are in and your, we will post the GPAs in the students' Naviance accounts. We can't put the GPAs in because it messes them up somehow from one computer system to the other. So um, when we meet with them individually, we will uh, give them those. Or they can just email us and we can tell them what their GPAs and their ranks are so they can put those on their applications. Um, so I'm not going to go word for word, line for line, but it's just important information in here of what goes on month to month to help keep you on track with things. Moving along is the table of contents, and then again, as in all the other workbooks, a word from, a word from guidance. Your guidance counselor is here to advise you during the college planning process. Our job's not to choose your colleges or get you, but to direct. It's gonna be one of those nights. <laughs> direct you in the process. We don't get you in. Hopefully the hard work that you've done over the last three and a half years is enough to get you into the schools. We will advise you. We will help you. We will proofread things for you. We will do whatever we can. But ultimately, getting your applications and all that stuff out is the student's responsibility. The next two pages are just a review of what we covered in the last two workshops. And then we get to today and why we're all here. How to apply to college. So we're going to go over this little flow chart. And then after we do this, we'll get into some of the details of what we're talking about here. So there's three steps in applying to college. The teacher recommendations, the applications, and the test scores. So let's talk about teacher recommendations first. Teacher recommendations. Hopefully all the seniors have now asked at least one teacher to write them a letter of recommendation. In many, in most cases, one letter will cover you. Um, there are some schools that will take two or more. The one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to um, send more than what they're asking for. Some of these colleges have thousands and thousands and thousands of applicants, and if each person submitted just one extra piece of paper, it really kind of becomes a problem on their end. Uh, as I tell everybody every year, Notre Dame got so frustrated with people sending all these additional things. They put in their application, we want two letters of recommendation. If you send us more than two, we're noting in your file that you don't follow directions. So you're thinking you're doing a good thing. Take it, don't read it, do whatever you want with it. And the admissions committee opens up your file, and the first thing they read is applicant doesn't follow directions. So if you Want to send more than what they're asking for? Just call the admissions office. Is it okay? If they say sure, then send it. If they say no, we really prefer that you send one or two, whatever it may be, just send what they're asking for. More is not better in this, in this case. So, hopefully your student has asked a teacher at this point. It's usually a junior teacher because they've seen them most recently for the longest period of time. You don't want to really get into um, a freshman teacher who you've never had again. Um, if you had a freshman or teacher or a sophomore teacher and we had them again currently as a senior, that might not be bad because then they can talk about the progress that you've made over the years and the maturity and the growth. After they ask the teacher, then they go to Naviance and they complete the teacher letter of recommendation information sheet. And I will show you in a little bit how to access that. And after they complete that form, they're going to save that letter to the teacher. Uh, so they're going to save that uh, teacher letter of recommendation info sheet in the journal section of Naviance. The journal section, you can save any documents. In. My, um, my suggestion is anything that's college-related, I would save there. The essay, um, any correspondence back and forth with colleges. This way, later in the process, if a college is is asking for another piece of information. We lost your essay or whatever it might be. 
You don't have to wonder, where did I leave that? Did I do it on my desktop? Is it in school? No, it's in Navias. I can access it anywhere I have an internet connection. So that's just a, a little suggestion from us. Um, Navias can make it. So after they make their official request, that's how the teacher knows, even though they got a verbal commitment from them, that's how the teacher knows they're serious, they want a letter said, and that unlocks the door so the teacher can actually upload their letter into Naviance and send it electronically to the college. So that official request to Naviance is very important. Um, the teacher will then write the letter and upload it into Naviance. And then if there's any questions about whether the letter was done, whether the letter was sent, uh, they should really address those with their teacher, not with their guidance counselor. We don't, they don't work for us, we don't work for them. Uh, we work together, but we can't tell them what to do. So they really need to talk to their teacher if they have a concern or a question about whether or not where they are in the process of the letters. After that, the teacher clicks and it goes right off over here directly to the college and it gets placed in an electronic file. The second piece here is the standardized test scores. First step is the teach the student needs to contact the appropriate test center, which would be either College Board or American College Testing. Okay. And the way they should contact them is through their accounts that they set up, because you have to register online to take the SAT or the ACT. So they go back into their account. They don't need to take both tests, one or the other. They go into their account and they click send my scores and they pick the colleges that they want the scores to and they pick the scores they want to set. So if your son or daughter took an SAT in May and they took it again in October and they liked their October scores, they were better than their May scores, they can pick just, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, just be building all day. Um, they can pick the October scores and just send the October scores. Um, if they did better on the evidence-based reading and writing in May, but better on the math in October, then they can send both sets of scores and the college will super score them. They'll see everything, but they'll take the two highest scores because they don't have to be in the same test. Very important. We do not have legal rights to submit or send SAT or ACT scores to colleges, official scores. Uh, they have to be sent by the student, and what makes them official is coming directly from the college board or ACT directly to the institution and not passing through anybody else's hands. So it's important. <coughs> I know. Um, it's important that they take care of that and not forget every year. We have students and parents that end up calling saying, you didn't send my SAT scores. We can't. We can see your SAT scores, but we can't send them. And then those go directly to the college. The third piece, is the most work, is the application. And most of the colleges now subscribe to the common, not most, but it's, it's over 700 colleges now that subscribe to the common application. Um, we had all the students in boot camp sign up. Um, and so I set up an account for Common App. And uh, another one coming up. And then um, we're having a Common App party next Tuesday after school in the guidance office. So any student, whether they went to boot camp or not, if they haven't set up an account, if they have and they have questions, can come to guidance between 150 and Three o'clock uh, Tuesday after school, and we'll all be there and help them. Uh, they just need to bring their laptops, and we'll help them with uh, the common applications. There's two pieces of the common app: is the essay and is the application itself. So anybody that went to boot camp has a final essay done. That's what they worked on for three of the four days. It's their essay. Um, so they probably have a pretty good essay too because Ms. Davis works really hard. Um, so uh, that's, the, that's the hardest part of this whole process is the essay. Because it's not just a writing sample, it's an opportunity for the student to express who they are and uh, what they're going to bring to the campus in addition to this, the, uh, the 
rather than their academics. Um, the other side of it is the application. Uh, I would strongly recommend that you proofread their applications. I know as a guidance counselor, I sit down with all of my students and proofread their common application. Um, however, I'm not going to notice that they misspelled the name, they got the wrong phone number on there, that type of stuff. So it's important that you, you double check what they're doing. And then we go through the process of making corrections, proofreading, making corrections again, proofreading, and keep going through that cycle until we have a nice clean product that we have. The next step is uploading the essay into the application. For those of the uh, seniors that went to boot camp, most of them have done that at this point. And they have to pay online, the online application fee. Uh, the online application fee, you're going to need a credit card number for that. Uh, and uh, if you receive free or reduced lunch, then they need to see their guidance counselor right away so we can uh, talk about fee waivers and, uh, and process that, that stuff. Uh, so it's, but it takes more than just coming down and we have to, it's actually a process we have to go through that can take a few days. So please, if that's, uh, if that's something that you're entitled to, make contact with us right away so we can get that out of the way and take care of it. Uh, and then the student will submit their application and their essay with the fee to the colleges. Now this is very important. There is no phone number to call Common App. Um, there is an email address, uh, which a lot of times they don't respond to. Once the student sends the first application out, the Common App, so if they got five colleges listed on their Common App, and they have one with a November 1st deadline, and they submit it to that college, but not to the other ones on the list, they can never go back in and edit that app, the main body of the application. It's frozen. So they can't say, well, I'll send it, I'm going to make changes to it for the other four schools. They can't access it at that point. It's frozen. Okay. All they can do is answer the individual questions specific to each school that's left, but the main body of that is not going to be cannot edit it and change at that point. So when you're ready to send the first one out, please, please make sure that is your final product. Uh, there is just, it is, like I said, there's no one to contact to change that. Okay, so now here we are going to Naviance to complete some forms. We have this at the bottom. It really should be at the top right next to the uh, essay and the application piece. Um, back in the old days, Everything used to come to us, and then we would start our piece, and we would mail every stuff envelopes and mail everything out. But now most of it's electronic, so you're going to want to do this piece really before you finish the applications. If you want to go to Naviance, you want to complete the request for transcript. Once you complete the request for transcript, you list the colleges that you're applying to, and you complete that request for transcript, that sends us a message through Naviance that hey, I'm applying to this school. Otherwise, I wouldn't know. Okay, so that may make as the official request we get. The other three things, the activity sheet, of the two things, uh, the activity sheet and the guidance counselor, letter of recommendation, information <coughs> sheet, are the other two pieces that we need in order to complete all the forms and write the letters of, the letter of recommendation. Now, some students we know better than others. Some students are in guidance quite a bit. Others see us maybe once or twice a year. They're just independent. They things go well. They really don't need us for much. Um, we know you, your students pretty well on paper, though, because we're constantly looking at uh, looking at their their uh, records and their grades and all the stuff that they do. So those forms, the activity sheet and the council rep form, are very important because we want to make sure when we're writing our letter that we're capturing them as a well-rounded person. We don't want to miss something that's been significant important to them uh, that they would like the colleges to know about. So it's really important that um, we get those so we don't throw up one-liners and say, well, they did this, this, and this call us to every question. It's really not worth their time reading that. We want to talk about their experiences. And, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit when I show you how to access those forms. So those get emailed to us, and I'll show you how to do that. We require 15 school days prior to the college's deadline 
to process and submit all the documents. And this is what we submit to the schools, the high school transcript, the secondary school report form, the first quarter grades, and then eventually the mid-year grades, the school profile, the counselor report, and the counselor recommendation. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to get completed uh, and sent out. And then we send that off to the colleagues. Testing information. Hopefully everyone has taken and already taken at least one SAT. We recommended the May one uh, or June if they couldn't do May. Uh, and we do recommend they take it at least twice. So a lot of our students are taking either the October or the November one. We had a few that took the August one. We are not a test center for October. We are a test center for November. And if you just look further into your book, you can see the dates and the registration deadlines for the SATs, the ACTs, and the SAT subject tests. Now let's talk a little bit more about the forms. So we've got three forms. We have the, the blue teacher letter of recommendation sheet, the green guidance letter of recommendation sheet, and the activities worksheet. So the instructions are right here of how to access them. I'm going to show you on Naviance in a minute how to do that. Um, and also how to save them. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's we'll switch over to Naviance. Okay. So for those of you who have not been on Naviance since last spring, it looks a little different. They no, family connection no longer exists. They got rid of family connection, and now we have up here in the left corner, Naviance Student. Uh, so anything that you may have saved in here is still in here. All the different things that you worked on during the course of the or advisory over the last several years is in here. It's just in different formats now. That's all. So. Um, see in the uh, under seniors that's the, our message board so you, you can change that and let you know what's uh, what's coming up um, parents we did mail home access to Navion so you can have your own account and see what's going on in your, uh, with, with the help your, uh, your child with the process and see what they've been doing uh, if you don't remember how to get on to Navion so we can reset your password just so you know your guidance counselor so we're going to scroll down. Again, this is the home page. It pops up. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. And where it says Document Resources, right over here, we're going to click on that. And I bet you I'm timed out. I am, because I said something. But plug is that Plug on it. So these are the three forms that need to be filled up. The activity sheet, the letter of recommendation, information guidance and the one for the teacher. So let's click on the activity sheet first. <coughs> so this is the activities worksheet and it's broken up into athletics, music and drama, school publications, and all the other publications we have here are uh, is uh, yearbook. Student government, any honors, this isn't honors classes, this is honors received. So, National Honor Society, English Honor Society, Presidential Merit uh, Awards, um, John Abigail Adams Award, those types of things. And it can also be any awards you've gotten through band or uh, athletics or anything like that. Uh, other clubs and programs, community service, and then work experience. So this is for, serves two purposes. If you can have that, send an email a copy of this to the guidance counselor. And when you start the scholarship process in February, you're going to have to fill out a form that looks very similar to this and put all the activities in. So that will pretty much be right there in that form. Um, just flipping back to the book for one second. If you go to page 10, You're going to see samples of what to list on your activities worksheet, also on your application. Over here in the left-hand column, we have listed all of the activities, athletics clubs that are offered 
at Middleborough High School as of the printing of this, which was in the, uh, in the summer, uh, this past summer. Over here on the right hand side are some suggestions for out of school activities. Our students really shortchange themselves in filling out their applications on these forms. Uh, and they really, they're not really putting the thought in about all the things that they've done. Now, the colleges don't want to hear that you did the walk for hunger once in seventh grade and you've never done it again. They're looking primarily for what you've done between ninth grade and twelfth grade. And that also includes uh, sports that maybe you, that season hasn't come around. So, for example, softball and baseball are spring sports. If you've played those sports the first three years and you know you're going to play a senior year, you can check that box for grade 12 also. Um, and, uh, you know, things like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, volunteer work through churches, temples, and mosques, or even other places, uh, um, you know, after school programs, hospitals. Uh, we, I have a lot of students that have been doing dances, they were four or five years old, and they forget to put that stuff on, because they're like, well, I do that out of school, it's important, they want to see that stuff. Um, and that shows a, a long-term commitment to something also. So just look this over, and, um, and make sure that you're not shortchanging yourself, and you're getting everything on there to really kind of that's more represent who you are as a student. I had a tutor. I had a study group. Um, I did some online stuff. 
That's the stuff they're interested in, the steps that the student took uh, along the way. So again, statement is two or three examples of why it's meaningful or significant and move on. So more than two or three lines, nothing more than a short paragraph for each one. And they should not leave anything blank. The only one we'll let them leave blank is special circumstances. If they have not had any special circumstances that have uh, had an impact on their academics, they don't have to feel compelled to make them up. So we'll let them skip that one. And then also, anything that the student shares on this, they need to know that they're giving us license to share that with the colleges. So if they don't want it shared with them, they shouldn't put it on here. I'm not going to show you the teacher one. It's similar to the guidance one. It's just a little bit shorter. And it's geared towards the academic experience in the classroom. Please make sure that the activity sheet does not go to the teacher. The teacher, even if the teacher asks for it, the colleges don't want the teachers to give uh, they have a laundry list of the student being involved in art club and playing soccer and having a part-time job when they have fir no first-hand experience with that. They want the teacher to write about the academic experience they had with the students, an academic reference. Now, if the teacher happened to be a coach, they can talk about that experience too. That would actually be a good recommendation. Um, but they want the guidance counselor to write the all-round one and the teacher to write the academic. Over. <coughs> Let me show you how to save these. We're going to go to About Me up here, and then we're going to go to My Stuff, and then to Journal, and then we're going to click on the plus sign over here, and then you just type in whatever it is. So, Activities Worksheet. My suggestion is put a date next to it because if you go back in to make changes to it, um, you want to make sure you're working out of the most current document. Um, and then share it with the appropriate people, so counselor or antique and parents. Um, and then click add, and it'll be saved in your journal. It'll be there forever. Now, just because you've saved it and shared it with people doesn't mean that they're going to see it or get it. You'll always see it. It'll always be in your account. You have to email it or print it out and give a hard copy to your teacher and your guidance counselor. Um, I would recommend email. I can't tell you how many times in the fall when I have all these letters to write that I would, uh, you know, if I you know, had some downtime and sitting at home or I'm away for a weekend or whatever, and um, I'm like, you know, I got a couple hours, maybe I'll knock off a letter or two, and I just go right to my email and I have an electronic copy right there. I don't take my, my work back very much, so, um, so it's helpful. Uh, so I would email it. Also, very important, do not save this as a Word document. That's very important. <coughs> if you save it, I'm sorry, do not save it as a Google doc. Save it as a Word document if you can. Do not save it as a Google doc. Google, for some reasons, changes the formatting of this, and it should always be typed. Those boxes will expand and give you more space. But Google will uh, change the formatting and make it uh, just jumbled and, and, uh, and just, it's, it's hard to read sometimes when you do that. So if you cannot open it as a Word, or save it as a Word document, then I would save it as a PDF um, and then email it to us because that would keep the, uh, the original formatting. The application. So for those students who have not yet um, started the Common App, first you've got to make sure that you have at least two schools that use the Common App. You go to commonapp.org and that green button up in the right hand corner, apply now, you click on that, and then you set up your account. If you've already set it up, you just put in your email address and the password that you've created. Um, please write down the password someplace. Um, we don't have access to your passwords. This is a private thing between you and Common App. Um, so it's really important that you save your password if you want to get it. Um, use your school email address because we have to, you're going to have to match this up with Naviats. And the email addresses and Naviats are the school email addresses. So they have to jive, otherwise we cannot send things to them wrongly. So this. Um, Big question, how many schools should I apply to? 
Well, the application fee is running anywhere from ten to a hundred dollars, and ten is rare. I would say on average, you're probably getting anywhere between sixty and seventy dollars per application. We uh, recommend four to six schools. Uh, if you do your research and your homework, you should be able to narrow it down. I would say on average, our students here apply somewhere between four and eight schools. Uh, you're really above that number. Uh, unless you have a special circumstance, I have a student who is, um, has done a lot of traveling over the course of her young life and um, is looking at international schools also, so she's got 12 schools on her list. Uh, in the past, I've had families that are packing up with their last the last child to graduate. They're like, we're getting out of here, we're selling the house, we're downsizing, we're moving someplace else. Uh, so the, the, uh, the son or daughter would um, apply to schools here because they are familiar with the area, and then places where mom and dad are moving to a bit more certain family. Uh, but like I said, four to six is usually uh, So we have three different categories of schools. We have realistic, we have stretch schools, and we have safety schools. The realistic schools, when you're looking at the numbers, the SATs and the, and the, uh, the uh, GPAs, you pretty much have what they have, but what they're, what they're asking for, okay? Um, and uh, so that's the, uh, that's the realistic school. The safety school, uh, when you look at those numbers, there is no question in your mind you're blowing them out of the water. Okay? You have far exceeded those numbers. Uh, and then the reach, the reach of the stretch school, Maybe your SAT scores in the area, your GPA is a little bit lower, or vice versa. Um, or maybe both are just under what they're looking for. Uh, maybe, like I said before, you have family members that have gone there before. It's a family tradition. Uh, but you should have, most of your schools should follow the realistic. Maybe one or two stretch, and, or one or two and save your backup. One more word about the safety of your backup. It's not always because of academics. Over the course of my career, I've had some situations, unfortunate situations, where my students have um, financial considerations and proximity to home. I had a student um, who lived with her and her dad, and dad lost his job for senior year after they'd already built up the financial aid forms. Um, and um, she couldn't afford to go to her first choice of school, so she ended up having to go to uh, one of her safety schools much more reasonable price. Um, so that's that's a reason to have a backup plan also. I would never not apply to a school because of the cost of it. If it's a school you're seriously interested in, apply the financial aid process take place and see what happens. Uh, and then the other student that I had, um, her father unfortunately passed away her senior year. Um, it was devastating obviously to the family. It was just her and her mom. Um, she was supposed to go to school to get out of Arizona and she went to her safety school, which happened to be Yukon, which was only a couple of hours from Michigan. Uh, so she could still stay connected with Mom. So there's other reasons to have the safety school, but just make sure when you put that safety school on the list that you're not doing it because your guidance counselor said you have that safety school, that you have that safety school on there, and you could live with it at least for a year. Okay? I've had students come back saying, I don't want to go there. Why did you put on your list? Because you told me to have savings. So you got to be comfortable with it also. So the criteria for college acceptance. Course selection. What we mean by that is the number of the uh, strength of your schedule over the last four years. Uh, you know, have you been challenging yourself? Have you been kind of coasting? Uh, the one thing they don't want to see is that you did really well and took challenging classes the first three years of school and then seeing the year you kind of took off, kind of cruising to the finish line. Um, they're not looking at, at it as you winding down your high school years, they're looking at it as you gearing up to college. So it's important to uh, at least be consistent or continue challenging yourself uh, at that level. Uh, the recommendations, your interests, your test scores, a lot of schools are starting to go test optional. Uh, your essay, your rank, your GPA. Interviews, not a lot of schools interview. Very, very few schools interview now. But if you happen to come across one that will do an interview, 
absolutely positively take advantage of it because that means they really want to get to it. The schools that do it are very sincere about it. They know the people who really get on campus. They were there they usually smaller schools. Um, if you have no idea what you can say in an interview, how to dress for an interview, stop in and see us and we'll happily walk you through that process. And then any awards, recognition, and curricular activities that you have been involved with. So there's five different types of applications. We have early action, early decision, priority, regular decision, and rolling admissions. So let's start with early action. You can apply to as many schools early action as you like. It is a non-binding process. You just find out sooner. The early action and early decision deadlines are the first and the 15th of November and December, not every first and 15th. Each college picks one of those dates that they like that works for them. So, and they don't necessarily have both early action and early decision, which we'll talk about. Today. So early action, you can apply as many schools, you just find out soon, you'll probably find out before or right around Christmas time. So it could be the greatest gift or the worst gift of all. Um, early decision is a legal binding contract that the student, the parent, and the guidance counselor are all signing, saying that you are only applying to one school early decision, and if you get in, that's where you go. You have to immediately withdraw your, app, your regular decision or early action applications, and that's where you go. And there is a shared list out there on colleges. So you can do not play that game. I had a student several years ago who applied early decision to Babson, and Bentley, and I got a call from the tennis coach over at Babson, who I happened to know I went to college with. I didn't know she applied to Bentley, to, uh, to Bentley. and uh, sorry, Babson. Um, and she was, um, she had been there. She had done overnight with the tennis team and all that, and they were all ready. To, and, and actually, they did a unconditional. Oh, well, sorry, they conditionally accepted her. And the official transcript from the um, well, what ended up happening was Bentley found out that Babson got an early application from an early decision application from also both colleges were simply decisions. So she lost the colleges and she lost the um, So it was serious business. We're not really big fans of early decision guidance. Most guidance counselors aren't. Uh, you're not going to find out about financial aid for months later. Uh, and if they feel like they got you roped in, you have no other choices. You just don't want to set yourself up for something that might be more than you're going to take on. Um, so you have to be very, very sure. This is where I want to be. I can afford it or I'm willing to take on the amount of loans that I have to pay off. Um, you just got to be very, very sure. Uh, priority is similar to early action, but it's usually specific to the individual college. And then we have our regular decision deadlines. Uh, regular decisions begins January 1st, and they run the 1st and the 15th of the month um, until about April. Okay. And each college again will pick one of those dates uh, as the year regular decision deadline. And then there's rolling admissions. So with, the, with all of these here, the, the top four, what happens is they wait. The applications come in, they wait until the deadline. They process everything at the same time as one pool of applicants. And they say, who are our strongest candidates? And they make decisions. Rolling admissions, you apply, they get it, they read it, they make a decision. There's no deadline. It just You can apply for rolling admissions in August if you want. But they don't, they don't make decisions based on the whole pool. It's just a first come, first serve. As soon as they get it in, they, they read it, they make a decision, they let you know. So there's positives and there's negatives to rolling admissions. The positive is there's always a place to apply to. So let's say you weren't planning on going to college and all of a sudden last minute you say, you know what, I think I want to. There's places to apply to. Massasoit is a rolling admission school. Um, Bridgewater actually is now a rolling admission school. Um, so, uh, but, so there's always a place to go. The downside of it is once they fill up, they fill up. Several years ago, Northeastern used to be rolling a long, long time ago. And usually if you applied in January, it was fine. You know, most of the kids did their stuff in January and February. 
all of a sudden, all my students that were playing jig were getting rejected. So I called Northeast and I said, what is going on? So we filled up in December. We had that many applications that came in. That early. They now have a deadline. So you just got to kind of be careful so because it's pros and cons. So let's talk a little bit about deadlines. They mentioned earlier, 15 school days notice. Uh, school days is the key word, not three weeks. And the reason that we, we say that is because, you know, we're school and we have vacation periods and we have a lot of days off. Um, so we want, we want to make sure that we are having enough time to process all the forms I talked about and write a well thought out letter of recommendation. Um, you don't want to have to rush through that part of the process. So if we look over here at January 1st, college application <coughs> deadline, the first regular decision. All everything needs to be received in guidance by no later than November 30th. That's because of the vacation at the end of the month. Um, you know, and so you know, we tell the students they don't want to work on vacation, and we don't want to work on vacation either. So we actually have to have that stuff out before Christmas. Um, it doesn't always work out that way. But uh, same thing around Thanksgiving time when we have a few days off. So just be very careful with your deadlines. Colleges are very unforgiving when it comes to deadlines. You miss it, you might be a very well qualified person, but especially the high level schools, you miss it, we gladly reconsider you next year. Um, so you got to be very careful with the college deadlines. We can be flexible with guidance as long as we have a heads up. We can tell the students, don't come to us the day before it's due to the college or after the deadline. There's not a lot we can do. We can get it out, but it's going to be late. Um, if you know you have, you're struggling, you've got a lot going on, you just, your team just made the uh, you know, playoffs and you know, the fall season and you, and you tie it up with things, come and see us. We can always work something out, but when you come in, and say, it's due to the college tomorrow. It's really difficult. Uh, the letter isn't going to happen that quickly. I can tell you that. You can probably get the transcript out electronically, but the letter of recommendation, unless you want us to say they're a great kid, call and say if any questions. We just don't have time to write a well thought out letter. Okay, so just work with us on that and we can do the best we can. Now, while we're talking about this, I can guarantee every single person in this room is going to, the student in this room is going to get an email. At one point, I was saying, thank you for applying to our school, but your file is incomplete. And then you've got to panic, especially if it's over a vacation period. You go, oh my god, who am I going to call? What am I going to do? Do not panic. As long as you have get, got your application and your application fee into the college by the deadline, you are safe. You have made your deadline. Okay? If the SAT scores didn't make it in on time, they're not going to hold that against you. As long as the materials the rest of the materials from the outside sources coming within a reasonable amount of time, you are going to find. What's a reasonable amount of time? It could be anywhere from three to six weeks, uh, depending on the school, all right? So a lot of times what ends up happening is the students submit something, and that's the key that unlocks the electronic file. They, the, the computer doesn't think. All the computer knows is I've got a check, or check number, sorry, a credit card number, and I've got a I've got an application. It does a scan. We're missing SAT scores. We're missing a teacher rec. We're missing a transcript. All of a sudden, you go, oh my god, college board is screwing, screwing things for me. My guidance counselor got us on my transcript. My teacher didn't do the letter of recommendation. Most likely, we did all that stuff. Um, and it just didn't get... What happens is when we send it through Naviance, we have a record of when it went and what it did. It'll say submitted. A lot of times they don't open up their email every single day. In fact, it can be a week or two sometimes if it's right around the deadline time. And they don't pull that against you as long as it's, everything's there. And as long as you make your deadline, the other stuff is fine. What happens is if it says submitted, we know that they got it. If it says uh, received, we know they opened it. Okay, you can't see that, but we can see that. So don't panic. You all are going to get those, and it freaks everybody out, and I totally get it. If you're worried about it, just print it out, come and see us, and we will let you know if we send it out, when we're going to send it out, and it just, depending on the time, if it looks like it's been a long time, we'll get on the phone, and we'll call them, and we'll say, open up your mail, and please pull this out. And we'll it out. Okay? Okay.
Okay, IEP is a 504, so if we have any students that are receiving any sort of support, uh, there are colleges out there that have specialized programs of support. Locally, we have um, Curry College has a very good program, and also uh, Westfield State has a very good program, two uh, to of the uh, very well-known programs for students that need some support. Um, there are other schools also, and we have a list of guides offices in the Okay, this is an important page also. This is all school information that the student is going to need to put on their, on their uh, college application. Our school code number, our address, our phone number, fax number, the correct spelling of Mr. Brannigan's name, the correct spelling of your guidance counselor's name, and their contact information. Um, our class rank is weighted, our class size, we will be announcing shortly. Our GPA scale is 4.0 unweighted. And the years that you attended here, most of you started in September of 2015, and you'll be graduating in June of 2019. If you were a transfer student, you may have to adjust that a little bit. And your date of graduation is June 1st, 2019. So it comes sooner than you know. So, I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to link Common App to Navians. And these are step-by-step -step instructions of how to do that. These are actual screenshots off the Common App, with the arrows pointing what you need to click on and what you need to complete. And then we move over to Navians and what you need to click on. And that pink bar that you see right here. Uh, right here. Once you match your account, and you match it by putting in the email address that you use on the Common App, once you click that, it'll turn green, and it hopefully will turn green, and it will tell you that your accounts are now matched, which gives us the ability to send everything electronically. Requesting teacher recommendations. So we talked about this in the flowchart a little bit. So when you go to the Navion's homepage, you click on colleges and then you click on apply to college, letters of recommendation, and then you're going to click add request, and a drop box on the left hand side will show up, and you're going to select the teacher. It's like the teacher that you want. All of our teachers' names are loaded in there. Um, and then you're going to select either choose specific colleges you want the letter to go to or send it to all of the colleges. This is a little tricky. If you have one teacher, you can click all colleges. If you have more than one and the college is only asking for one letter of recommendation, then you're going to have to click specifically which schools you want to go to. Otherwise, the first teacher that loads their application in, is that, and that, and that uh, letter of recommendation will be the one that gets sent to the school. So if you have an English teacher and a math teacher that you ask for recommendations from, and for WPI, you want the math teacher's recommendation to go there, but your English teacher loaded hers in first, that's the one that's going to end up going, unless you specify. Okay? Um, so if you just go by what, what the actual number of what they want, that won't be an issue. You can't undo that. Once it goes, it goes. Um, and it, it, it is what it is now. So just be very careful of that. Then you want to type a little note to your teacher. Dear Miss Teacher, thank you for agreeing to write my letter of recommendation. I will email you my teacher letter of recommendation information sheet as soon as possible. My earliest deadline is, please let me know if you have any questions or need any additional information, sincerely. Okay. Always thank your teachers for doing that. They're doing the letters on their own time. This is not part of their job responsibility. So please <coughs> thank them for their efforts. Requesting transcripts. You're going to go again to the Colleges tab, and then you're going to click on Apply to College. 
and it's going to say request transcript, and you click request transcript, and if, a lot of times if you add the schools through the common app, it will already be there, you just click on the boxes, and you want to send the initial transcript, okay? That's what we're sending to start the process, the initial transcript. And then um, you click add, and get transcript requests are all done. So again, I would strongly recommend that if you already have your list of schools, load them in, make your request, get your forms into your teacher and your guidance counselor so we can work on this while we're working on the application. Uh, financial aid. There's three different types of financial aid. There's federal, which is the free application federal student aid FAFSA form. Um, that's the second largest federal form in the country behind the tax form. Um, and then there's the CSS profile, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then the college's own form. So the FAFSA will be available October 1st. It's an online form, and there's the website, www.fafsa.ed.gov. Please remember the first step of FAFSA is for free. So if at any point during the application process you are asked to pay a fee, you are on the wrong website. Okay, so if you go to fafsa.com, they're going to charge you money. You should not be paying for this. The whole purpose is to get money, not pay money. Um, so be very careful with the website. Um, they made a change a few years ago, so it used to be based on your current, this past year's taxes. Um, so you actually had to file early. You had to file in February, you get your taxes done as quickly as possible. Um, they changed that last year. <clears throat> now you can um, use your previous year's taxes so you can start the process. Yeah. My suggestion is, Let's take care of all the busy work. Let's get the forms out to the teachers and the guidance counselors. Let's get the application <coughs> that they take care of, and then transition into financial aid and eventually scholarship stuff. Just get as much off your plate and move on so you're not juggling a bunch of balls at the same time. Uh, so that's the FAFSA. You have to fill that out to get any type of financial aid. Um, that form absolutely has to be filled out. The next one is the CSS profile which many private schools subscribe to. They have monies in addition to uh, the federal government office of endowments and things like that. So what they do is they will look and see what your FAFSA, the federal government's willing to kick in, see if there's still a need there, and then they will make, uh, they will make their contribution uh, based on that. The, um, you do not need to hire an accountant or to fill out these forms. There's no tricks or secrets to it. You can't hide any money or anything like that. The FAFSA is income-based. It's not asset-based. It is income-based. So whatever the parents made, whatever the student has made, it's based on the tax on the taxes. Uh, the CSS profile is both income and asset-based. Uh, and then there's the schools, and that's a college board. So because it's college, of course they're going to charge you people, and they charge you personally. I don't know how much it is, but it's at least $27 per school. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, and then there's the school's individual forms, and that's part of the application process. Uh, that you see a little bit. Now, because financial aid is an ever-evolving and complex process, we are far from experts as guys. So we do have an expert that comes in from NEPA that um, will have to explain step by step how to go through the process. That night is Wednesday, October 17th. Um, that was one of the handouts, green handout, our scholarship night in our financial aid and scholarship night. It's February 12th in the library. Um, that's the scholarship booklet and all the local scholarships and stuff, the emails you've been getting from me for the scholarships that I've been sending out are things that just get sent to the school from various places. So they may have fall deadlines, but our scholarship deadline is usually the end of March. Uh, the main the stuff that gets out. So uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, October 17th, Friday is late night. Uh, I suggest that the parent be in the student go, since this is all about them. They need to understand that process also. Athletics. If you have a student that is interested in playing Division I or Division II uh, sports, it 
college, they need to declare themselves for the NCAA eligible center. Um, that is, the website is right there. The code that they would use, the SAT code is 9999. They're going to have to list all of the courses that they've taken in high school and the courses they currently scheduled for. So they can come and see us and we can give them an unofficial transcript um, and a copy of their schedule if they've lost that. Uh, they need to write down their courses exactly as they're listed on our transcript, no, no abbreviations or anything like that, because we have to submit our courses every year to the NCAA for approval. Most of our courses are approved. Some of our non-level courses are not approved, which is true for any school. But if you end up abbreviating, uh, let's say, uh, let's say you abbreviate uh, AP Lang composition, AP language composition, AP Lang, it's not going to match up. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're you matching up exactly, so because you certainly should be getting credit for an AP course. Um, <clears throat> or any course for that. Uh, so it's important to uh, make sure you, you're filling that out. And, uh, and even, it, it really should have been done a while ago, but it's okay, you can still do it. It will come back as a rejection initially, and the reason for that is you haven't passed your senior classes yet. So you are going to have to submit a final transcript to them after you graduate, and then everything should be done. And that's only Division One and Division II. Um, if you're going for Division Three, you do not have to declare yourself. The other thing you need to be aware of, too, is you do have to have a minimum of a 2.3 grade point average for college students. We just talked about these two things. And the back of the book is the glossary of terms, like the other ones. Um, if you have any questions about acronyms or names of things, um, if there's one missing, email me and I will add it. And that's it. So I will take questions now. If, um, when they add the schools on, say they have four schools and a later date, they go, oh, I want to apply to this fifth school. Can they add that later? Absolutely. Okay. You can add it to the Common App, and you have to make another transfer request for now. Other questions? You know, at the beginning, you said that if they um, had the bodies from high different schools, and they just the first one, what do you mean by that? Okay, so the common, app, the common app has two parts. There's the general questions that they asked, um, name, address, family information, school you went to, um, are you in financial aid, location, all these things. And then, after you add the schools that you want to apply to, they have specific questions from each school. Do you want to live on campus? Do you want to start in the fall of uh, 2019? Uh, do you want to, Bridgewater State has a, an honors program. Do you want to talk about honors programs? They have some specific to that school. Once you submit the first application, you can't go back to the main body of it and make any changes. You can still work on the individual questions from each school. you got to speak up a little, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so the, que the question is, if you're applying early action and you don't think your grades are quite there, what happens after that if you apply? Yeah. Okay, so one of two things will happen. If you apply early action and you don't have what they look for, Either get a rejection or defer to the regular grade. Okay, if you get a rejection, you make a phone call to the admissions office. Say, I applied for the actions, I didn't get in, please move me over to the regular decision. And then we, of course, will send out the make your grades, we automatically send those out uh, for everybody, and then um, they can be consent. Other questions? So the question is, if you're taking an October SAT, how long does it take before the scores can get sent over to the, uh, the colleges for early action, early decision? Um, 
up usually two to three weeks. It's about two weeks now. It used to be six back in the old days before we had a electronic, but it's about two weeks now. Um, and again, as long as the student gets the application and the application fee in, the SAT is <coughs> going to It's okay. Uh, so, uh, and that happens. That's, that, that happens. Is there a question? Okay. Yes. It's a, it's the school's preference. They don't usually have both. Um, you would tend to find more elite schools or higher level schools that have early decision. Um, I think Boston College is early decision. Um, they tend to again. Boston College knows they compete with Providence and Holy Cross. College is a big business. Okay. They're <coughs> The early process was never put in place to benefit the student, although they marketed to them that way. It was to try to get the top students in every high school across, really around the world now, to, to uh, commit to them before they went to a competing school. Because as you're going through the process right now, it's about the numbers, right? And they want to jack those numbers up and make themselves look even better than they are. Our incoming freshman class all fell in the top third of their high school class and averaged in SAC scores of this and GPAs of this. And so, um, so it's it's really the competition. It's a competition. The state schools compete with each other. The Catholic schools compete with each other. Uh, you know, the Ivy Leagues compete with each other. Uh, so it's a preference. You know, some schools want early action, some want early decision. Well, if there's no more questions, I'll be around for a little while if anybody wants to come up and ask a question. Um, I do appreciate uh, you all coming tonight. Hopefully this was helpful. If you can help us out, um, you've all got evaluation forms when you came in, hopefully. If you can please fill those out. If you need something to write with, there's pens on the table up front. And you just drop them in the box on the way out. We really do take your feedback and try to tailor this to the needs of the parents and the students. Um, again, thank you for coming. If any other questions come up, Please email your guidance counselor. Um, and just a quick thank you to Mr. Pelletier, uh, the TV Pro students who videotaped tonight. And good uh, lighting and sound for us. And to the custodians who will clean up after us also.